We had a 3.9 earthquake and swarm today in Utah. It's a location of the Wawa Springs supervolcano. And it also has cinder cones, basalt lava ridges, as you can see. And it's a, a area of the extension of the Basin and Range, east, uh, west, uh, east California. The location on the Wawa Springs Tuff is the rock formation centered in Millard County, Utah. This discovery is a result of nearly 30 years of research. This took place about 30 million years ago, the largest of the Indian Peak Caliente Caldera complex includes flows over 13,000 feet thick in most areas. The volume of ejection was 5,500 to 5,900 square kilometers. The location is Indian Peak Caliente Caldera complex. Now, uh, according to USGS, and we'll see that together on the map, this is an area of... Uh, a fault line that extends from South California, going east past Las Vegas, through Utah, Colorado, into Wyoming, and then sweeping northwest again around the Rocky Mountains. This whole area is full of earthquakes. This is an area, of course, of uh, magma underneath. Now, how many people have felt this? According to USGS, it was reportedly felt by 156 people, this uh, 3.9 earthquake. The tectonic summary, earthquakes in the intermountain seismic belt of southern Utah and the vicinity. The ISB belt is prominent north-south trending zone recorded seismicity in the intermountain west. A modern catalog of instrumentally located earthquakes in Utah begins mid-1962, and historical earthquakes record, record uh, go back to the 1850s. The ISB in southern Utah is characterized by scattered seismicity with locally dense clusters of small to moderate-sized earthquakes. The largest earthquake in the ISB in southern Utah was magnitude 6.5 in 1901 in Richfield. A group of three magnitudes 5 and 6 earthquakes occurred in Ellismore in Sevier Valley, 1921. To the south and southwestern Utah, towards uh, eastern California, a damaging earthquake of 5.9 happened in 1992 near St. George. The earthquake swarms and clusters of maximum magnitude 3 to 4 are common in this area. Okay, so this is the one we just had of 3.9, which is not that small, and it's been felt by... Uh, over a hundred and some odd people, and I, I would say a thousand plus have felt it. The faults in the uh, Intermountain Seismic Belt, the ISB, in southern Utah, coincide with a transition between east-west directed stretching in the basin and range, it's stretching, and it has magma underneath, to the west and more stable crust to the, of the Colorado Plateau to the east, tectonic movement on generally north trending east and west dipping range and plateau bounding normal faults result in horizontal extension characterizes part of Utah. The Sevier Valley is an area of variable and complex deformation involving significant components of folding and both normal and strike slip faulting. The most prominent geologically young fault in southwestern Utah are the Hurricane and Sevier Faults. The Hurricane Fault forms the west-facing Hurricane Cliffs, which define the eastern edge of the Basin and Range. Faults in the ISB in southern Utah locally show evidence of displacement younger than 10,000 years, but average recurrence intervals are generally longer than those on faults on the ISB in northern Utah. Recurrence intervals for surface faulting on the most active segments of the ISB in southern Utah are generally many thousands, tens of thousands of years. Now, um, I'd like to go and um, I will leave you a link to this wonderful site having to do with the volcanoes in southern Utah. And uh, we know that this is where we had our supervolcano of Wawa Springs about 30 million years ago. 
It was published, uh, the results of a long-term study indicating that supervolcanoes like those in modern-day Yellowstone produce very extensive eruptions in this region about from 18 to 36 million years ago. Much of the evidence of these eruptions have been eroded away or covered by younger sediments, but remnants of this rock type known as ignimbrite welded volcanic tuff, we see this type also around Yellowstone, provide clues to the extent and duration of these eruptions. And unfortunately, these volcanic rocks can be radiometrically dated, providing ages of the eruptions. So this supervolcano, this field, uh, have preserved rocks that provide a record of the eruption. The common, uh, they're most common in layered volcanic rocks occurring in many colors, representing successive eruptions. The rocks are well cemented, welded, Fine-grained volcanic ash contain larger volcanic fragments. Modern eruptions that produce such rocks can be very explosive, consisting of very hot ash and cinders. Other rock fragments and hot glasses, which travel downslope from the volcanic source, quickly moving flow, much like an avalanche. And such an eruption and flow is termed a nui ardente. Pine Valley Mountains, recognizable to residents of St. George in the Pine Valley Mountains, representing geological features called a lacolith, intrusive igneous mass with distinctive dome-like shapes. They form below the surface as molten magma pushes up into overlying rocks and then slowly cools and crystallizes. Resulting rocks are identified as quartz monozonite, monzonite. The monzonite of Pine Valley has been radiometrically tested and they age it at 22 million years. The subsurface dome shape was exposed by weathering and erosion and removal of overlying sedimentary rocks. The Lacolith is one of the largest in the world and reaches levels of over 10,000 feet. And now uh, we have maps of the landscape and the geography, the geology featuring uh, these activities including the Cascade Volcanic Arc, the San Andreas Fault and the associated faults, the north trending mountain ranges, the valleys that make up the Basin and Range Province, and the north trending fault zone called the Intermountain Seismic Belt, the ISB, that's what we talked about before in Utah, the succession of Yellowstone calderas, and numerous volcanic cones and lava flows in Nevada, northern Arizona, and Utah. So this is all basically connected. That's why we have that intermountain seismic belt that we see arcing um, from uh, southeast California all around the along the Colorado Plateau, the base past the basin range, and into Yellowstone, the Yellowstone caldera. So somehow this is connected. So let's keep that in the back of our minds or in the middle or forefront of our minds. Okay, these um, areas are, when you're talking about huge supervolcanoes, you're talking about the Wawa Springs of Utah, Colorado supervolcano, and you're talking about the uh, Yellowstone supervolcano, they're not far from each other, not even from uh, uh, Long Valley Caldera. Now, St. George is essentially in a transition zone between two geological provinces, the Basin and Range, to the west in the Colorado Plateau to the east that heads towards Yellowstone. The city lies within the widespread volcanically active region including northern Arizona and southwestern Utah. Distinctive volcanic features in the city are nearly flat top ridges which are capped by lava flows that, con that constant most, uh, mostly of, uh, that consist mostly of rock basalt. Uh, you can also find these beautiful uh, rocks uh, in the hand size uh, massive basalt specimens of semi precious gemstones called the green stone peridot, peridot. It's actually the mineral olivine, often found in basalt. The hand size samples uh, show how, what the olivine looks like when it's embedded in there. The vesic vessels, vessels from uh, form from gases trapped in the molten lava. When erupted onto the surface, the pressure decreases and gases expand and escape, and that's how they form 
vessels as coolings, uh, the cooling occurs, both types of basalt occur in St. George area of Utah. Now, what's going to happen in the future? Um, well, we see that there is a variety of geologic features in Washington County, surrounding areas of southwest United States. Within the past six million years, within St. George area, the most recent eruption occurred about 30,000 years ago. So this brings up the question, will there be another eruption? And so when, that's, when is that going to take place? Well, of course, we don't know. Uh, but there is one clue. There are active hot springs in this area, such as the Pa Tempe in Hurricane and the Veyo Hot Springs. So there is still a source producing heat below. There is magma below because we have hot springs. But is it enough to generate another volcanic eruption? Well, we don't know. Sometimes it's reported, but possibly represented by urban, an urban legend, an ancient time, especially in New World. Uh, <laughs> you know what they used to do? We used to see them in the Indiana Jones movies. You know, they, they uh, sacrifice in order to protect people from volcanic eruptions type of thing. Uh, also to protect against other naturally occurring geological hazards. So, uh, you know, God forbid we're not there anymore, thank goodness. Uh, we don't know. It all depends on what's going on with uh, everything neighboring. We do have the magma body, and this to me, if you look at the map, uh, it looks uh, to be in the range of, well, let's look at it together. Uh, and this is our, uh, this is the uh, 3.9 that we're talking about, a depth of about 12 kilometers. And just uh, for your information, there we go. This is the area right here, okay? And this is the area that we're talking about, the fault going from South East California uh, through uh, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, up to Wyoming. And this is the basin and range area. So this is the area of Wawa Springs supervolcano of 30 million years ago. And this is Yellowstone, of course, here. And um, let's take this off now. Okay. And we'll take that off. And you'll see that uh, we remember that we were told that the magma for Yellowstone comes from the Baja California area here. It also supplies one arm going west, the other arm going this way, this way, into Yellowstone. So you can see that all of this magma is, of course, connected to Yellowstone, going through this area where we've had this 3.9 earthquake. Now, this magma feeds all the high-threat volcanoes of uh, California and also feeds, the, that's the western arm, and the eastern arm swings past up to Yellowstone. So, obviously, uh, when will it, will it blow? Okay, it's active, it's got geysers, it's got uh, fumaroles, steam vents, uh, so it's active underneath, and it's hot. Um, we have geothermal plants in uh, salt and sea. We have geothermal plant in Ridgecrest, geothermal plant in um, Long Valley Caldera and in the geysers, the biggest in the world. And uh, this magma is connected to the blob here that feeds the west coast and all through here to Yellowstone. Uh, this was given to us, we, we always refer to this, you know, you must be I'm sure you know you know this very well by now because I've said it so many times. This came to us in a beautiful map, radar imaging underneath, uh, from April of last year, and uh, obviously this is connected. So, what do you think about this? Obviously, we have. That's why we've had an increase in earthquakes here, from the Ridgecrest earthquakes. Ridgecrest being in a volcanic field, the cause of volcanic field, obviously we had an increase in Yellowstone earthquakes swarms, an increase in Long Valley Caldera supervolcano earthquake swarms, and we have an area of increase here as well. Uh, I don't know why this is nothing. There's nothing here for some odd reason. That is very strange. So, uh, we don't know when it will blow, but um, 
15,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, uh, and it's active now with fumaroles and geysers. So that's what's happening here in Utah. And I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.